Welcome to Max ECU Training Part 19. This video we're going to be exploring our closed loop lambda correction feature. Our closed loop lambda correction is going to allow us to have a hands-off approach and making sure that our fuel delivery is always going to be right. Now meaning we have a lambda target table and we have a lambda reading coming in from our wideband sensor. This is going to allow the Max to compare the two, figure out how far they're off from each other and make adjustments against our main fuel table. This is going to ensure that we always have an accurate and repeatable lambda mount regardless of our ambient temperatures, our elevation or whatever conditions we're running our engine in. We're going to have a lot to cover in order to understand how to set up and work with our closed loop feature let's jump into our video so we can check this out okay so let's get started we're going to be taking a look at working with our closed loop fuel correction within our max ECUs our closed loop fuel correction is going to be when we take a look at the wide banner lambda reading that we have integrated into our max we compare it against whatever the target lambda is going to be at and then we figure out the difference between the two now the max ECU can determine what the error or the deviation is going to be and then it can adjust what the fuel mixture is going to be or the injector pulse width so that we have our lambda hitting our target lambda that we're requesting from our target lambda table. We can use this in actual yeah, calibrating of our main VE fuel table, or we can use it as our long-term operation correction against our airflow and fuel modeling we have going on. Let's take a look at setting up the basic details here and understanding what is going on for working with our closed loop correction. I utilize closed loop correction in all of my fuel calibration tuning We'll be finding, I'll do a quick demonstration here in this video of how to actually integrate it and work with it. Um, but it's going to be something that you definitely want to go and turn on right away and start to use to guide you in dialing in again your main VE table. So first thing I want to do is jump here into my navigation window. We're going to go to the bottom under tuning. Here we're going to find we have our main VE table and we have our target lambda table. Let's talk about these two real quick and just reiterate and go over what we've already covered in our VE fuel strategy video. Um, I just wanna make sure you're on the same page here starting off into this video. This particular table, our main VE table, is gonna be an estimation of airflow. If we increase our percentage VE values here, that means we're telling the max that we're moving more air into the engine or more air is being ingested into the engine. And therefore, we need more fuel. If we go and cut our values down, we reduce the values in percentage volumetric efficiency. That means we are moving less air into the engine. We need to reduce the injector pulse width. So this table is relatively simple of how to work with this. Now, we will find we have our underlining equation. Fuel mass is equal to air mass divided by target lambda. Now, this is going to be representative of the air mass that's entering our engine that comes from our VE table. We would specify what we want the lambda amount to be at coming from our target lambda table. So if we go in here and change our values in the table, if we go and change it from 1.0 lambda to 0.9 or change it from 1.1 or 1.0 to 1.1, so we're essentially richening up or leaning out our mixture, we'll find that our target lambda will change. And because our target lambda is integrated into that fuel calculation, fuel mass is equal to air mass divided by target lambda, we'll find that our injector pulse width varies. And if we're doing our job correctly and we're dialing in our main VE table, if we change our target lambda, we'll find that we reestablish the new target and we hit that target. Now this relies on having our fuel table here dialed in properly, or the main VE table dialed in properly. Also having under fuel general here, having all of our injector data programmed right. So the flow, the dead time, and the short pulse width if we have that data available to us. We want to make sure that we're characterizing the injector set we're using and the flow or the size of injector because that will vary what the, the actual injector pulse width is going to be. So again, we determine air mass from our main VE table. We determine target lambda from our target lambda table. Knowing air mass, knowing target lambda, we can figure out fuel mass. Fuel mass gets turned into the actual injector pulse width, that's our base injector pulse width, knowing all of our injector data here. So the final injector pulse width that's delivered is going to be our fuel pulse primary. We can see that's right here. That's going to be the combination of both the flow and the dead time and short pulse width data if it exists within our programming. So that's going to be how everything works here and integrates together. Now, jumping back into our lambda table, now, knowing all of this, we're going to find that the lambda table and our closed loop fuel correction format will also play another role. So not only is it used in our fuel calculations, but it's also going to be used as the basis or the target for where it's going to determine the error or the difference between our actual lambda to the target lambda so it can start to figure out how much it needs to adjust our injector pulse width by to be able to get our lambda to our target. So if there's a deviation or a difference here, it needs to either increase or decrease the pulse width, either richen or lean up the mixture in order to get things in line here. So we can take a look 
under our real-time data, under fuel, we can look here, we have a lambda target. That's exactly what we find here, 1.0 lambda, which is coming from this area right here, I've programmed in the table. Below it, we're gonna find we have a lambda target error. Lambda target error is gonna be figuring out the difference between our lambda and our lambda target. This lambda target error is showing right now negative 0.009. So we're seeing that that is going. Thanks for checking out our teaser clip. If you want to see the rest of this video and more than 500 hours of current EFI training we have to offer, make sure you click right here. If you want to go and check out more teaser clips from this training course, click here. And you don't want to miss any of the videos we're going to be releasing on this channel. So make sure you subscribe and click here. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys later.